Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to talk about preparing your song for mixing. So you have a recording done and you want to send it to someone else to mix. Uh, they need things a certain way so that they can work efficiently. They don't need to come back to you and ask questions about the tracks. It should all make sense as soon as they drop it in and nothing is missing, uh, nothing sounds weird, nothing is out of time, things like that. So I have this recording finished here. I've done some editing and I'm preparing it for mixing. So in this project, I have MIDI drums and we'll be rendering each individual mic. So the kick in, the kick out, the kick sub, all those tracks as uh, wave files, uh, one for each microphone that's used in that drum kit. Um, the bass will be rendered without any effects on it. All the guitars will be rendered without effects, plus a version with effects. And that's it for this song. Before we export anything, we need to get things set up correctly in the session. So first of all, do a save as. File, save project as. And we'll just call this uh, KB song uh, for mixing. You can call it for mixing, mix prep, something like that. And so we've got this project saved. We're going to start off with changing the project start time. So right now, the song, the actual music, starts at bar 7. And there's nothing before that. So I turn Snap to Grid on. Let's give us two bars before the music starts. So I'm just going to make a time selection from bar 1 to bar 5. Right click in this time selection. And we're looking for remove contents of selection moving later items. So that's going to move all the items, all the automation, all the markers, all the regions, Everything past bar 5 is going to be moved over to bar 1. And now, so what was at bar 7 before is now at bar 3. So there's two bars before anything happens on this track. And this will just give the mixer some room to work with if he wants to add some effects going into the song, things like that. Let's talk about the track names now. I've got this pretty good in the session, but it could be better. And when we're exporting tracks, we're going to be using the track name as the basis of the file name for that exported file. So when the mixer brings it into his project, he's not going to want to rename all of his tracks. If he brings those files into an empty project, the new tracks are going to be automatically named with the name of the file. And if it's a mess, he's going to have a mess. And it's ta more, taking more time and attention away from actually mixing your song. So name your tracks. As a mixer, I would say that the name kick in is totally fine, but kick O, I'd probably name to kick out. Kick S should be kick sub. Snare T, let's make that top. We want it to be succinct. So S and R, everyone's going to know that means snare. Especially a, a professional mixer, he's going to know that means snare. Let's say S bot wouldn't really be clear. Let's say the track is called snare top. There's SM57 and the name of the preamp and all these other things that are in there. Or if there's a bunch of guitar tracks and they're named by the player and the guitar that's being used and the amp that's being used, the microphone, the cabinet, all these details are put into the file name. It gets incredibly frustrating as a mixer because you just want to drop that file in and have that's guitar three. Guitar 3 is more relevant than all that other information. You can put that information into a text file, um, relay that information to the person. You don't want that on your file name. You don't want that on your track names. So snare bot is fine. Rack 1, 2, 3, 4. It's fine. Hats, ride, overheads. Near room. Let's just call this room. Far room. Uh, verb track will be deleted because we don't need that. Bass is uh, fine. We'll call this bass DI though. And John Guitars is a, a folder track, so that's not going to be rendered. But Scratch Guitar 1, we'll name that to Guitar 1. And Guitar 2, Verb will be deleted. And AH1 will be Guitar 3 and guitar four. There aren't a lot of tracks in this project, so that's a pretty quick process. 
you kind of get into the habit of doing this as you're recording, just naming things a certain way, uh, the way that other people would like to see them when they receive the files. But if you have 60 tracks and they're all untitled and things like that, it's going to take some work to actually get that set up right. But it is worth it. The mixer or even yourself, when you bring these files into a new project, you're going to be happy that you named these correctly, took the time to do it correctly. So we've got our song start, we've got our track names done. Let's render the virtual instruments. That's pretty straightforward. I'm going to open up Contact and we're going to uh, enable the master view because we're going to be using this master volume. This master volume here controls all the individual outputs that uh, are going to these individual tracks. And I know that the, um, the kick and the snare mics are pretty hot coming out of here. Let's just solo the drums. If I have my kick in mic up at zero, track fader up at zero, it's close to clipping, not quite. So we can give the mixer a little more room to work with. He doesn't need maximized tracks. We don't need these peaking at zero or clipping above zero. We can just go to the virtual instrument master volume. We can turn this down by three, four, six dB. Then all of these individual tracks, all the individual outputs uh, that are routed to individual tracks inside Reaper will be scaled down. We don't have to take 20 little send faders and turn those down. Uh, we don't need to mess with these either. So that's just giving yourself some headroom and that's going to apply to every virtual instrument. So if you have the track volume at zero and the parts playing, whether it's a synth or drums, uh, you want that somewhere in the middle range from like minus 24 to minus six, and not above that, not way below that. All right, so we're going to render these drums now. We're going to click on the first mono track, kick in, and then shift click to the last mono track, which is the ride. Going to the render options here, stems, Selected tracks, entire project. We do want a folder to be created. So we'll just call this um, KB Drums Export. And that's going to, you can see here in the Render to section, it's going to create a new folder and then put in that exported file there. Now, this is a 44.1 project, so we want to change that and channels set to mono because these selected tracks are all mono tracks. So it's not going to take the track panning into account here. It will take the track volume. And if we're being really picky, we probably set that to zero again, but I'm not too worried about that. As long as we're in that volume range that we set before, it's not gonna be a problem. So now I'm going to add these to the render queue. That's this button here. That's just going to save those settings and add it to a list of files to process in the future. Now I'm going to change my selection to the overheads to the far room mics. And I'll take these and do the same thing, again, using the, the track file name wildcard. You can find that in this list here. And it's just going to use the, the uh, track name as the exported file name. We're going to change this to stereo. That's the only other thing we're changing here. 24-bit, wave, using BWF. Add to render queue. Now we go to file, open render queue. Now we see what it's going to export. So it's going to render this project using the uh, entire project, rendering to a wave two channel, 441, 24 bit, and then the folder that is going to. And we can render all. So the project opens in the new tab with all the same settings that were there before and the selected tracks are exporting. It's exporting three of them at once. And now this one's doing 10 track, uh, 11 tracks at once. And if we look in the finder, 
and there are all the individual tracks. And we can close this. Let's actually test those, make sure that that is correct. We're going to open up a new project tab, going to Finder, select all these drums, drop them in here, put them on separate tracks, and set our tempo to 135. Everything appears to line up. And it sounds just like in the other project. So there you go, that's the virtual instruments. And again, that will apply to any virtual instrument. Just scale down your master volume to make sure it's in the acceptable range as a good starting point for mixing, uh, and then render it. There were no effects on these tracks, but if there were, I would bypass the effects or delete them from the project. And now let's move on to the bass. I'm gonna show you this stuff in a couple different ways. With the bass, it's just one track. What we're going to do is glue all these edits together. This track starts at bar five, not at bar one. So we need to fix that. Uh, one little kind of trick that I have is to just put the track in record mode, record for just a moment, right? So it gives us this blank piece of audio here. It's going to be named with the track name, right? Base DI. So you just have to double click on the track control panel. That's going to select everything in this track. And then I'm going to use the glue action. So right click, go to glue items. It's going to use the project settings for the creating a new WAV file. And that's going to attach that silent bit at the beginning, any empty areas of the track are going to be filled in with silence and then we've got all of our edits consolidated. We then need to take that out of the other audio files folder and we can always save time finding things by just changing this to date modified. So this newest file is this one here, basedi glued. Copy that, go up a level, go back to our exporter files and paste. Now this does have the base di dash glued uh, suffix. We can quickly rename that. If it's just one, we can just, you know, do that. If it's several tracks, you can right click and rename and then replace anything that says glued or dash glued and change that to just blank. And then it will rename that like that. So because of the way that we've exported this, these effects are not going to be rendered. So these, uh, the, the 808 and the bass professor is not going to actually be applied to that audio. So if we go into this project, bring back our bass DI track, drop it in. We've got a complete WAV file just as it was in the other project. It's in time. We could probably correct this clipping, but I'm not too worried about it because it's going to be distorted to hell in the actual mix. So that's all good. Now let's look at doing the same thing with the guitars, but in a different way. Actually, we can do all the guitars at once. So I'm going to just command click on all those guitar tracks, and we're going to file consolidate export tracks. So this kind of does the same thing as the glue. I find it a little bit more time consuming to do it this way than to just prepare all the tracks and glue them. But I want to show you all the options here. We need to set this to the project rate, uh, channel, source media. We could set this to one or we can set this to auto. We've got mono audio files here. It's going to export as mono. Again, entire project, selected tracks, resample, it's not going to be applicable, but yeah, we can change our format here if we need to. 24-bit, we do want to write the, the BWF metadata. We're not exporting MIDI, so we don't need to worry about that one. And we do need to change a folder. So let's go to the project folder, which I've got uh, Kurt Blue Drums and the export folder. I'm gonna go there. And let's process. So this should do all four of those tracks at the same time, ignoring any plugins that are on the tracks and automatically filling in this gap at the start. All right, 
and let's switch over to our test project. Go to the finder, and we've got these four tracks here. It's automatically given the track number, which I'm not a fan of, uh, and it is also put in consolidated at the end. Not something we want for this. So we're going to rename and change consolidated to nothing. So with that batch renaming built into OS X, I can't automatically remove those track numbers, so I'll have to do that manually. Bit of a pain. There are many other um, batch renaming programs. I used to use a couple of them for different things, but most of the time that uh, the one built into Finder solves the problem for me. So here are my new guitar tracks. I can drop those in on separate tracks. And if I play these, it's actually the DI tracks. Which sound horrible <laughs> on their own. But yeah, that's what the actual guitars sound like. If I take this guitar track here, solo just this one, and turn off my effects. Other than the panning, it sounds exactly the same. So. We do also want to render these with the sound of the amps on here as a reference, or because they sound pretty good, they could actually be used in the mix with some further processing. So again, we're going to the regular render window, doing selected tracks, entire project. We already have our folder selected. Let's just do an underscore amp, or you could do underscore amp, you could do processed or underscore effects or underscore wet, something like that that just shows that um, it's the same as the DI. Actually, that's what we should have done. We should have renamed those guitar tracks to guitar for underscore DI. So track underscore amp, track underscore effects or uh, wet, something like that is, uh, is going to show that these are processed tracks. We are doing 44.1 mono tracks, and we do need to make sure that all four of those tracks are selected, and now we can render that. And we go over to Finder, and we're going to rename these just to make sure that DI is in the name after the name. So Guitar 1 DI. All right, so again, these new guitars are here. So guitar one wet, guitar two DI, guitar two wet. So we'll take all these wet files, go over to the test project, and we'll mute these and drop in these files, separate tracks, play the song. So this is a great starting point for a mixer. All the tracks named, everything's lined up, everything's edited. He knows which tracks are processed and which are not. And I think that's it, guys. I think that covers every possibility there is. Virtual instruments, recorded instruments, pre and post effects. If I missed anything, please leave a comment, either on YouTube, on the website, on Facebook, wherever you can get a hold of me. But I think this covers it. Hope you've found this useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.